church on this second Sunday of Easter we are so glad that you're here we hope that during our time this morning as we worship our Lord that you have an encounter with the risen Christ uh, I want to just lift up the uh, bulletin to you this morning hopefully sometime during the worship service you will take a moment to fill out that uh, connection card uh, if you have a need for prayer or if you have a praise you want to let us know please put that uh, on the connect card and then turn it in during the offering time later on during our worship service as we begin our worship service, I want to kick it back to Kimberly, uh, who will lead us in our announcements. Good morning. I'm Kimberly Neal, and there are a couple of announcements for you today. Uh, the youth will be attending an event at Means Methodist in Andrews on the weekend of April the 13th. 
Uh, the youth have planned a Dart Wars and Devotion on April 20th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Dinner will be included. This is a hugely popular event with the youth. Contact KC Peoples, the youth pastor, if you would like to attend. Celebrate Recovery is in its 13th year of helping people with hurts, hang-ups, or habits. If you are interested in attending or if you would like more information, contact Jody Wallen. Again, thank you for worshiping with us today. We are so glad you chose to worship with us. Please stand as you are able and turn to your neighbors and share the peace of Christ with one another. When the music for the introit begins, please be seated.
Well, as we come to you today, some of our hearts are broken. Some of us are going through challenging times. And so, Lord, we pause in this time to lift up those joys we have, as well as those concerns that we have, Lord. Because we know that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are also among them. And so, Lord, as we lift up these names, we pray, Lord, that you hear our prayers. Bless with the names that are on our hearts this day. Lord, hear our prayers. 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 God looks from heaven upon the children of earth to see whether there are any wise enough to seek the fellowship of God. By faith, my Christ live within our hearts that we may be rooted and grounded in love and filled with all the fullness of God. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, the people of faith shall rejoice and the whole church be glad. Christ Jesus, from whom every family on earth is named. To God be all the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thank 
are seated. I want to invite the children to come up for children's time. Come on down.
Okay, boys and girls, go with Miss Janice or back to your seats wherever you're going, all right? Y'all have a great day. It's good talking with y'all today. Will the ushers please come forward and congregation please join us in the offertory prayer. Mighty God, who sees us as we are and as we might be, we have brought gifts this morning that you might dedicate them to work in our community, in our nations, and throughout the world for your glory. Yet all the money we have cannot accomplish what you can make happen if we simply let Christ dwell in our hearts in every day. This is the offering we dedicate this day in Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen.
For the scripture reading today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that suppresses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
You know, when I left the house early this morning, it seemed like a bright idea to grab my baseball glove and my baseball since we're beginning a new message series entitled Field of Dreams. And as I was in the sanctuary this morning talking to CJ, I asked him if I threw a ball up in the balcony, would he catch it? I'm not concerned at all with his catching ability, although I am a little concerned with my throwing ability, so I will not be doing that. Would you bow as we pray? Oh, good and gracious God, Lord, we thank you for your holy word that we've heard read this day. We thank you, Lord, for the choir anthem that supported it. And now, Lord, we pray that the meditations of all our hearts would be acceptable and pleasing to you. And not only that, Lord, that my words not be my own, but thine. Lord, we love you. We ask these things up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I thought this particular Sunday would be a great Sunday to start a brand new message series. And after thinking about it, I came up with the idea of Field of Dreams. And for those of you that are baseball fans, of course, the MLB uh, season began last week. And so if you are a baseball fan, you are cheering for your favorite team, hoping they get to the World Series. Uh, If you're also like me, and you may be a Texas Rangers baseball fan, you're hoping that we win pennant number two this year and for those of you who are not baseball fans that's all right because as I was preparing for this message series there was another thought that began percolating in my mind and that's rather simple much like major league baseball season is beginning its brand new season this year we as a church are in fact beginning a brand new season in our life of ministry you know we are part of a new denomination our name has changed slightly There have been lots and lots of moving parts and, oh yeah, you have a new pastor here in your midst. I'm not sure if that's a prayer concern or joy, but I'll let that pass. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. These past several years have indeed been a a challenge uh, for this congregation. And whether it was COVID or whether it was disaffiliation discussion or disaffiliation dysfunction at times, This congregation has faithfully moved forward to what God has planned for us in this next season of ministry. My journey to be here with you has been similar to yours and yet different. And no matter the similarities or the differences, I think it's safe to say that we are all ready. We are excited to move forward uh, with the words of Jeremiah maybe in our hearts and minds, those, those words where he said that the Lord has plans to prosper us and to not harm us and to provide for us a future filled with hope. And with that said, of course, this is a message series based on the movie Field of Dreams or at least having the Field of Dreams as a backdrop. Uh, that movie came out in 1989 and it stars Kevin Costner and uh, among other people, James Earl Jones. And if you haven't seen the movie in a while, or maybe you've never seen it, you can stream it on Prime Video anytime you want. Or if you have cable, I understand next Sunday night, the 14th, TNT will be airing that movie. Uh, My wife is out of town this week working on wedding plans with our daughter, and so uh, I've been left at home by myself along with my dog, Shadow. And so yesterday, we spent the afternoon watching the Field of Dreams movie again, and it is truly a great movie, despite the fact that Shadow went to sleep while watching. I did not. The movie tells the story of Ray Kinsanella. He is a humble farmer from Iowa with a loving wife and a young daughter. And as the movie begins, he's strolling through his cornfield. And as he's doing this, Ray hears a whisper from out of thin air that says, If you build it, he will come. The voice repeats itself quietly, firmly confirming its presence. The voice goes on to to do more than grab Ray's attention. It, It stirs his soul, I believe. And so rather than just tell you about the beginning of the movie and how it starts, I want to share a clip with you. It's about three minutes, but take a moment and watch this video clip from the movie The Field of Dreams.
Eddie, what was that? What was what? That voice just now. What was it? We didn't hear anything. All right. back to real life. And I think I cut that clip a little short as he was responding to his wife Annie. He says, I'm just talking to the cornfield. You know, that's what people do in the middle of the night, isn't it? But I love that clip and I especially love that part in the kitchen when Ray and his wife Annie are talking. And just to be clear, I've had God speak to me in a number of different ways over my life, but I have never heard God speak to me audibly. It would be much more helpful, and you may agree, it would be helpful in our lives if God would speak to us audibly. Maybe some of you have God speak to you that way. But in that conversation that's taking place in the kitchen, uh, it's, it's to me an all-too-familiar conversation, as it may be for any of us in this room who have had the Spirit speak to our hearts you remember, remember what the conversation said. Annie says, what else did he say? And Ray says, nothing. And to which Annie says, I hate when that happens. And then Ray says, me too. This clear yet vague on the detail stirring leads Ray on a journey that requires much more than just a simple leap of faith. But I believe it also mirrors the full extent of the Christian walk of faith, which is why we'll be using this. This movie is a backdrop as we look forward to God's plans for us here at First Methodist Church, Odessa. I'm going to get to the unpacking of the passage of Scripture that Kimberly read a few minutes ago, but before I do that, I want to share the prophetic words from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. Here's what the prophet said. He said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is one. He is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Now these words may sound familiar. Jesus quoted this exact text when he was speaking before his public synagogue, his hometown synagogue. And he said those words that day when he read them in that hometown synagogue. He said the prophet's words were fulfilled by Jesus coming into and entering his ministry. But more than that, I think when brothers and sisters in Christ come together, are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do God's work in the world, and then that passage from Isaiah is also being fulfilled in us as well. As we kick off this new series, looking at Paul's words that he shared with the church in Ephesus, this passage says a great deal. 
It's a passage that speaks about God's mighty power and the power we receive when we yoke ourselves with Christ together as members forming one body. And indeed, we are called to live in the power of the Holy Spirit with a, with a bold love, if you will, as Paul says. And so what does that mean for us at this church at this time? You know, I think in order to answer that question, you, we may need to go back in time a little bit, and I've done some of that this week. You know, going through challenges and having obstacles in front of us and being resilient in the face of those obstacles is nothing new to this church. And I know I have a lot to learn about this church and its community, its history and all that's gone on. But just in gleaning a little bit of our church history, it's really clear that we have been through a lot and we know how to respond in challenging times. It was after coming to town in 1888, the Methodists uh, built a two-story school and hospital. That was wonderful, but it burned down three months later. The church moved on. And then in 1900, a pastor was appointed, and in 1901, it was reorganized, and 38 folks came together. They came together and decided that it was time to build another church. So that process began, and by 1908, here at Fifth and Lee, construction of a wonderful church building was begun that would open in 1908. And the Methodists have been faithfully serving and loving in this community since all that time making a difference in the lives of people who call Odessa or Midland or this county and this community their home. The success in ministry going back again to our early days, the growing membership saw a need to build a new sanctuary in 1937, only to have that also partially burned down in 1965, and thus it had to be rebuilt. And it was. And there's lots of other history that's gone on those last 60 years. But going back to that that time at the turn of the century. I can only imagine what it must have felt like to stand on this property in 1901 as plans for a new church were being discussed. I can imagine those 38 folks maybe gathering at the center of this property. I can imagine the emotions of hope as well as the various worries they might have felt at the same time. I can imagine those 38 people standing in the middle of our property looking all around them looking all around them and just imagining the possibilities that existed here. I can imagine them standing in the middle of our property thinking they were in the midst of a field of dreams. Now I know I'm just getting to know this, this church, but as I drive around the block and look at our church campus, as I come in here on Sunday mornings and I pray before the sun's up and just feel God's presence, as I go into our courtyard and I look up at the beautiful sky and our steeple, I feel that sense. It's as though we are standing, we are here, worshiping in a field of dreams. As I thought about this week, I thought it's pretty cool to be able to come to work every day to a field of dreams. And that is exciting because together, we and all those who join us We'll have an opportunity at this time and in this place, in this field of dreams to move forward in faith and trust as this congregation has always done. As together we pray and vision and dream and live out God's calling in our lives individually and corporately to live out the dream and vision God has for us. And I believe God bigs and plans big dreams. As we make our way through this message series, I just have to say that I believe baseball and faith have several things in common with one another. Each of them requires knowledge. Each of them requires concentration. Each of them requires practice. And most importantly, each of them requires teamwork. That brings us to the movie, The Field of Dreams. You know, the phrase you heard in the movie clip a few moments ago said, If you build it, he will come. Now this phrase is often misquoted as saying, if you build it, they will come. It seems in our world today that so often we tend to get focused on the they that we lose sight of the he. Yet God speaks to us all the time and it's important that we listen to him. You know, the story within this movie is the opportunity for Ray Kinsella, played by Kevin Costner, to go back and to play catch with his father. And to make amends for the awful things he said and did that he never had the opportunity to make amends for before his father died. So indeed, the he in the movie turns out to be his dad and the opportunity that he has to make amends. 
If you think about it, wouldn't it be really wonderful if we could go back in time and right all the wrongs that we've done? I don't know about you, but there are several moments in my life that it'd be great to have a do-over. What things might you want a do-over from in your life? You know, the church should be a place where we discover the power Jesus has to allow others to have a do-over, to allow us to have a do-over. You know, the church was originally intended by Christ to be a place where one could come and experience His love, could experience grace and forgiveness and healing, in comfort and encouragement in Christ with the people who also had those same experiences, those who also experienced God's healing love. Unfortunately, though, all too often the church universal has failed to do that. The church universal has often failed to reach out and has been too focused on mine and ours rather than focusing its attention on mission and outreach to sharing the love of Christ to those in need. This, unfortunately, has left many forgotten or lost. However, I believe strongly, if we, if we believe what we confess with our mouth, if we believe when we say things like that we're to walk by faith and not by sight, or when we say things like we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, if we really believe those things, then God's loving presence and the power of the Holy Spirit will enable us to live into those possibilities of God's desired in this field of dreams known as First Methodist Church Odessa. And I have no doubt that as we work together towards God's goals and desires, we will continue to be, and maybe even in new and surprising ways, to be a place that shares God's love and offers the story of redemption to a community and to a people who are so desperately in need of hearing about that. For those who desire a do-over, Christ has made do-overs possible. And we, you and I, we all have a chance to share this good news. And I believe that a church, a community of faith that builds its programs and its ministries driven by the right motives and godly desires, He will come. You know, Christ is present and Christ will be present among us, within us, and even at times in spite of us. God will be active and present. And to use a baseball analogy, we may not always hit a home run, and yes, there will be some losses. But if what we do is rooted in faith, in hope, in love, in our trust of Jesus Christ, then our endeavors will be successful and God will bless them. And then more and more of our community will know of God's ever, ever, never-ceasing love. You heard Kimberly read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21 earlier from the NIV. I want to share it again with you this morning from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase known as The Message. When we trust in Him, we're free to say whatever needs to be said, bold to go wherever we need to go. So don't let present trouble on your behalf get you down. Be proud. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask Him to strengthen you by His Spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite Him in. And I ask Him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breath. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives. Full in the goodness of God. Can do anything. You know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working with us, His Spirit deeply and gently within us. This passage says a great deal. It, it says that God's love has a mighty power, and the power we receive when we live in Christ together as one body with its many members is phenomenal. And we are called to live with that power in us with a bold love. Not a love for knowledge, not a, a love of science, not a love of self, not a love that's filled with selfish needs, but instead we're to be filled 
filled with love, knowing that tremendous love that is offered to us through Jesus' act of redemption on the cross. To know Christ fully is impossible, I believe, unless it is done in community and within community. You know, Christ dwells in the church like a bride and a bride, bridegroom in a sacred covenant. To establish a relationship with Christ means a relationship with other members of His body also. The church is a community of sinners reconciled to forgiveness with the God of the universe. If you build it, He will come, says the movie. And I believe that statement is true as it works in our community of faith. Because when a community of faith is built on love, the presence of Christ is there. And there is no doubt that we have experienced that in an infinite number of times on this property and in our community since those first people gathered here 125 years ago. Faithful followers who gathered on this field of dreams. And we too will experience things like that as well and more. Because I believe God has a dream to reach the children and the youth of our area, to teach them about the love for Christ. I believe God has a dream for us to go further and further into mission and outreach into this community beyond. And that God has a dream for us to, to go to new heights of spiritual growth and learning. And yes, I know that many of you have experienced these things in love in the past, but I believe there's still yet more to be realized. You know, I'd like to close by saying I think that I have a really, really good imagination. And some of you might say that you have the same but even with as a great imagination as we might have, God's plans for our life and for our church family may be bigger than we realize. These God-sized plans can and will be fully realized when we live out these words. And I invite you to hear again verse 20 and 21 from Ephesians chapter 3. Paul writes, God can do anything. You know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working with us. His Spirit deeply and gently within us. I celebrate all, all the wonderful, wonderful things, things this church has done in this ministry over, over the past 125 years, years in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And I look, I look forward, forward to all the all things that we will do as a congregation together. together. Now, I won't be here for 125 years. I don't think you all will be as well. But we have work to do, so this church can be continuing its mission down the road, 125 years down the road, to new generations, to new people who need to know of the love of Jesus Christ. I'm going to close by saying this, and I know many of you are already doing this, but if not, I want to encourage each and every one of us who call First Methodist Church of Tessa our church home to be praying. To be praying for its leaders, to be praying for its staff, to be praying for each and every one of us that we might indeed hear God speak to our hearts and minds. That we might know more fully what God desires. Let's pray that, that our leadership teams, that your pastor may feel God's presence and feel God's vision and know how to move us forward in the future. It is an exciting time in the life of First Methodist Church of Odessa. We have such a wonderful and tradition to, to lean on and to grow on and to move forward in the future. And we'll talk more about that next week as we continue our message series, Field of Dreams. Would you bow as we close in prayer? Our gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you for your love. It's only because you loved us, Lord, that we are able to love as you love. Help us, Lord, to love more fully. Help us, Lord, to feel your presence so we might do all that you call us to do. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray, and all together we say, Amen. And now we have the opportunity to celebrate in the sacrament of Holy Communion as Jody comes forward and shares the invitation with us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Make us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyous thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Come on, I wish Christ gave himself up for us. We took, took the bread, the bread gave, gave thanks, thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this. Do this, Jesus said, in remembrance of him. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice. In union with Christ, offering for us as together, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For our talk is here on us, scattered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make it be for us the body of the Christ and be my need for the world. The body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, in one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen, indeed. And now, in the of children, let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen indeed. I want to invite those who are helping to serve through me this morning to come up to the platform and uh, see Jody. And as Jody is taking care of the servers, I'm just going to give uh, some information about how you receive communion if you've not been here before. We will be serving a communion by invitation. Uh, that is the method which you're giving a piece of bread, and you will take that piece of bread that's given you, and you will dip it into the cup, and you will consume that. Then, when you're finished consuming, you may either come to one of the communion rails and spend some time in prayer, or you may go back to your seat. Uh, if, uh, if you happen to drop your bread, or you actually put your bread in your mouth before uh, dipping it in the juice, don't worry, we will give you another piece of bread. Uh, the Lord's Supper will last for all of us. 
Uh, I do want to say also, I think very important, this is not the communion table of First Methodist Church Odessa. This is Christ's table. In all are welcome who love God, who repent of their sins and seek a relationship with Him. So we hope all will come and participate. Uh, we will have three groups of servers. There will be a group here that this side of the congregation can come to, a group here that this side of the congregation can come to. And if you're not able to come down to the front, we will also have a group of roamers who will be with you to serve communion to you. And so unlike last week when I uh, dismissed us to come from the back forward, I understand we normally take communion from the forward back. So I want to invite those as our ushers finish preparing. Uh, Start making the way to the front. I tried this last week and I'm going to try again. We'll see how it works. God, God is, good. is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen.
Amen. Indeed, God is. In just a moment, we're going to stand and we're going to sing our closing song. Just want to extend an invitation if there are those among us who maybe uh, want to come forward and profess their faith and love in Jesus Christ. Maybe come forward and uh, join with this church. Uh, if that's where God is leading you, we invite you to come down during the singing of our final song. Come down during the last verse and we will uh, we won't get to busy. Uh, you come out now. But you know what I mean. <laughs> I have to stand there. It's the Spirit of God that stands among us and it's the truth. So we stand together. Would you stand with me and sing 292 in the first verse? the joy this morning of John and Beth Henderson joining our congregation this morning and so we have some questions for you that may be on the screen I think they are or they were or they will be but anyway do you believe in God the Father Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit do you confess Jesus Christ as Savior put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord do you receive and profess the Christian Christian faith as contained in the scriptures do you promise according to the grace given to you to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as a faithful member of Christ's holy church? Will you be loyal to Christ through the Global Methodist Church and joining with your brothers and sisters around the world do all in your power to fulfill its mission? Will you be a faithful member of First Methodist Church Odessa doing all in your power to strengthen this ministry through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness as Christ's representatives in the world. With all those things having been said, let me welcome you into the congregation of First Methodist Church, Odessa. And what I'm going to ask, because I'm new and I don't know how we do this, so what I'm going to ask you to do is when we process in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to follow me out, and I'm going to ask the congregation to go love on John and Beth and welcome them. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, now that we have the plan, I think all we lack is me giving a closing benediction. Is that right? Yes, all right, so let's close with this prayer. O oh, good and gracious and loving God, Lord, your love, as you've expressed it through your Son, is beyond our wildest dreams. Lord, we thank you for that love. And Lord, may we not only receive that love, may we take that love out, and may we share that love with all you place in our path. We ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.